Good morning, I'm Anna Grace, like Brian said, and the connection with Brian and Sonia is they are my second cousins, I believe. They are my mum's first cousins. Um, but in the Feezy family, which is that side of the family, we don't really, we don't really um, take notice of first or seconds or thirds because we all gather together um, often and eat, and um, I think the Lord loves that. Um, so over the last year, I've been doing ministry in Tauranga, um, like Brian said, and um, it is just such an honour to be with you here today. Um, it's such an honour to have you partner with me. Um, and just, you guys are one of the first um, people that I contact for prayer. Um, and so as, as, as well as um, partnership financially, the, the partnership with prayer is invaluable and I couldn't actually express um, how grateful I am. And I just want to be able to do the work that I do and step into the, some of the spaces that I step into without the foundation of prayer that your congregation really lays for me. Um, so I'm just so thankful for you all. Um, and the last year since I've been with you, I've also got married. Um, so I'm not a solo act. Um, thank you. Uh, but Corbin could not be here today. He is in Dunedin representing Tauranga um, in basketball. He's really tall. He has dark hair. If you're like me, I would be trying to imagine what he looked like. So I'll just paint the picture. He's tall. He has dark hair. He has dark eyes. He's half someone like I am, but um, just a little secret. You probably, if you, if you were to walk in the door, Next time, say, oh, you look so Samoan, because he's actually a lot paler than I am. So not everyone believes him that, um, that he actually is Samoan, but he is. Um, but we are so blessed to have your support, um, and I just really want to honour you all before I start. So thank you. Um, it's really hard to sum up the past year of work in a few minutes. Um, but just to recap, who might have forgotten or um, who maybe you weren't here when I last visited, um, the ministry I'm with is called Ignite 6 8, and it's based on the verse Micah 6 8. So it's all about leading and serving with a heart of justice and compassion. Um, so under that umbrella of Ignite 6 8, we partner with lots of other organizations and ministries, just really strategically so that we're not reinventing the wheel with mentoring and all these programs that are already actually set up in total, but we just partner with them and come alongside them, really. Um, so recently I was sitting at my desk in the spare room of my house, um, and the song Move Your Heart by Upper Room came on. Um, and it was playing out of my speaker, and as I sat there, I began to ask the Lord, Lord, what moves your heart? Um, to that, I sensed him say, it hasn't changed. A yielded heart. To yield is to surrender, it is to relinquish um, possession of control, to be dependent on him, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the author of life and provider of everything. A yielded heart moves the heart of the Father. So my dependence and my trust in him moves the one who created heaven and earth. And that just astounds me. So with this, I try, try being the objective word, I try to carry this heart posture into everything that I do. My heart yielded to the work of the Holy Spirit in me because the truth is that with him, I can do so much more than I could on my own. In the last year, I've really seen God move a lot um, I, I have more um, stories that I could count on my fingers and toes together. Um, I've seen such an evident correlation between um, sex trafficking, prostitution, abortion, and the foster care system. So all the work I'm doing is unto seeing freedom in all of those spaces. Whether that is preventative work with the mentoring I do, um, with the young girls or actually stepping into brothels, or uh, building relationships with the woman that I meet on the street, all of that is unto seeing freedom in all those spaces. The mentoring I do is with youth who have actually been referred by the MOE or Oranga Tamariki, um, and I get the honour of walking alongside so many young women. Uh, one of my girls just recently, um, she's 15, she's really little, really petite, uh, she just got kicked out of her house. Her mum put all of her belongings in black rubbish bags and put them on the grass outside. So she was then shipped off to this distant auntie in Katikati, which is around 45 minutes from Tauranga, um, and she was made to live there for a little while. Until this 28-year-old male cousin um, came on the scene, um, she didn't really know him. Um, and just in our weekly catch-ups of um, just asking how her week was, and often we sit in silence for hours. 
Um, maybe not hours, but it feels like hours. Um, and she just, I just began to notice signs of possible grooming. And so I took this to people. Um, I'm so blessed to have wise, wise counsel around me. And I took it to them, and it was actually confirmed by people in authority. And they were able to step in. So the 15-year-old was thankfully removed from that house and was no longer in a vulnerable position. But 92% of sexual offences often go unreported. So by the grace of God, giving me eyes to see with all these spaces that I'm now in, we were able to prevent her from being one of those statistics. With all the girls that I mentor, there's one common thread, um, and there's a missing father figure in all of their lives. And if he's physically present, he is absent in other way, either abusive or just consumed by alcohol. So there is just such a need I've seen for the Lord to turn the hearts of fathers to their children and children to their fathers like we see in Malachi 4. Um, and just some, some other really cool work. You'll notice it's just like a common thread that ties them all together. Um, but we have been able to walk alongside a survivor um, from the legal brothel system. And she has discovered uh, the Lord. And she has just been going on this incredible journey of inner healing um, that's just been transforming um, her insides, but evident in the way that she walks now. And so we've created this short film um, really in the hope that it would reach other women possibly stuck in that work. Um, and so, yeah, just so grateful that God has opened up doors like this, that this, this lady who was so broken when we first met her is now just we're just seeing this journey of wholeness and it's just been so incredible. So now she, is, she feels confident enough to actually go into other spaces and start sharing with young women and other girls. And so it's just such a joy to be able to see the Lord um, remove her from the cycle and put her in this other cycle of healing and wholeness with other girls who may be experiencing the same thing. Uh, this is just huge because prostitution was decriminalized in 2003, and so it's changed the landscape of the work. So it's now advertised as glamorous work for beautiful women, um, which we know is not the case. Um, but we do weekly prayer walks on Monday for an hour, and we have different locations that we walk around. There are three main brothels in Tauranga, and one of them actually neighbors the university campus, the Waikato University campus. And there are, there are student housing, and then there's the brothel, and then there's the university campus. And then there's this alleyway that goes past the brothel. And to get to the student dorms, you have to walk past the brothel. And so there's a sign that always says hiring, discretion, just, just discretion given. And so the landscape of work started to just really bring in a lot of young girls who are paying off student loans or want to earn a lot of money fast. Um, so it's just a joy to be partnering with young people in the university, but also being able to step into brothels um, and just laying the foundation of prayer as we stamp around. Um, I've just wept around. Um, I have talked to some of the girls inside of that brothel um, and they are just so broken. So um, prayer is so needed. Um, within the last year, uh, this was such a high victory moment. We have. Uh, hosted an organization called Exodus Cry. And Exodus Cry, I did not know until recently, but they're a big deal in the States and in the UK. Um, and they really work um, by breaking the cycle of exploitation um, and really believing that everyone deserves to be free. Um, and they do this in many different ways, but one of them is shifting culture. Um, and they do that through messaging, like short films, through podcasts and conferences. And so we got the honor of being able to premiere their newest um, documentary. And we rented out this massive cinema in Tauranga. And uh, truth be told, I did not think many would want to come. On a Friday night, I was like, who wants to come watching this documentary, which really showed, it tackled the critical injustice um, as the first documentary actually to ever explore the lives of sex buyers and what drives them. And the film explores these men's journeys from childhood exposures to pornography to becoming hardened predators to then seeing God just completely transform their lives. And so I just, I really did not think many people would want to come to see this. On, on a Friday night at 7 p.m., I'm thinking so many other people probably have better things to do. Yet, the cinema was overflowing. And we had people on call wanting to come in. Um, and I just felt like the Lord said to me, like spoke straight to my heart and said, you have little faith. 
You didn't believe that I could fill this room. And the exciting thing is that on the other side of each person who came to see this film, there was a potential, if they chose to do something about it, for to unlock change within their sphere of influence. So whilst there may have been over 100 seats, there is over so many lives on, on the other side of these people. Um, so it's just small things like that in the right direction that God could just use like just butterfly effects and catalytic moments for change to take place in other spaces that we couldn't potentially reach. Um, so on, on top of that, we have this um, very mediocre looking van. And it seats about eight people and it's called Street House. And we go out, um, the van goes out Friday and Saturday nights, um, and it's got this massive tree on it, it's a Christmas tree, and it just says street help, and we take out hot pies and hot drinks, and it seems so simple, but it makes such a difference. And um, everything gets donated by different companies and organisations, and we go out from 7pm um, till the early hours of the morning, sometimes... Um, the latest I've called into bed was 5 a.m. That was one really crazy night. Um, but we just get to serve the people on the streets. We go first to different areas because we have relationship with people sleeping rough and homeless on the streets. And so we go and we serve them. And um, we I don't know all of them by name, but I do know a lady and her name's Jewel Anita and she's incredible and she's one of my leaders. She knows over a hundred people sleeping on the streets of Tauranga. And there are over a hundred people sleeping on the streets of Tauranga and she knows most of them by their name which I just think is absolutely incredible. So we go and we, we feed these people, and then we go into, some people find this more exciting, we go into the mount. We go on Mount Monganui, there's this massive strip, which I actually saw Jacques at Pizza Hut um, when he was in Tauranga last week. That was such a, I always thought that Jacques had a brother, because I was like, what is Jacques doing in Tauranga? <laughs> but we go to this strip, um, there's a brothel um, by Run Roundabout near Pizza Hut, actually. And then along here is all these clubs. And that's like the night scene of Tauranga. And so we park up right in the centre. But before we do, we do a big loop. And we see the security guards saluting us because they respect the work that Street Help does because it's been going out for over 15 years in the streets of Tauranga. And so we hand out these pies. And uh, just recently, we had an outreach team um, who were this youth group from Rangiora Baptist in the South Island. And they came up um, because they love just everything that's happening in Tauranga. And so they were serving with us. And um, I was standing with some boys that were around 17 years old. And they noticed to the right of us um, that there was this really heated discussion, argument going on between a male and a female. And so they kept an eye on that. I've seen so many of these that I did not think that it was an issue. Except the female uh, walks off, stomps off around the corner crying, and then the, the man waits for her strategically for a few minutes, and then he runs after her. So these 17-year-old boys from the South Island don't know, don't know what's happening, haven't seen anything like this, and they're like, we need to go and make sure she's okay. So I'm like, send them off with three of them because it's better in numbers, and they go running down the streets of Tauranga, and then they, we get a call five minutes later, they see this lady and they just think that she's in harm. So they call for some female backup. So myself and Jewel Anita, who I just mentioned, we're running down the streets, like getting direction from these boys from the South Island. So they were sending us the wrong way. And it just felt like I was in a movie. I'm like running in this ugly vest, because you have to wear this vest to, be, um, to look legit, so you're not just handing out pies to, to people. And we're running down the street, I've got my flashlight, and we come on the scene and um, she wasn't harmed, so we, we, we were able to get her home safe. Um, but it's just such a joy, even in that, like some people would be petrified, but I've learned to, to throw away the fear in, the, in those scenes. Um, but yeah, just God is just doing incredible things in Tauranga. And that is just a few, um, a few stories. Um, but God is moving in the mentees that I'm seeing. Um, and I often send prayer requests for that, so I'm so thankful that you guys pray with me and contend, because um, I really believe that without the foundation of prayer, everything that I'm doing with my hands would be worthless. Um, but just to, just to end, um, I sat on the couch, one of my new couches um, from Marketplace. Marketplace is amazing, and I'm moving house, so <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, but I sat on the couch the other day, really excited actually, to sit on the couch. <laughs> Um, and asked the Lord what to share. And he said to, um, to share about my nana. 
And at first I wasn't so sure how this was directly related to my work. But as God began to speak, he became to make it so clear how my Nana's life is actually the most beautiful example of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, which births this powerful generational, generational echo of the Spirit through generations, which is the hope for every single person I encounter. My heart has been so stirred by my Nana's life recently, and I, and I have her Bible, um, and I see all these notes that she's written next to Revelation, and she's, she's really come face to face with a man of eyes of fire, hair like wool, and voice like many waters. And so I read these notes, and I often um, weep just at, at the notes she's written next to the verses, just Revelation that she's had from the Father. But my, but my Nana, she encountered the Lord. She encountered the heart of the Father later in life, and she discovered intimacy with the Lord. And she discovered a love for prayer and a passion for the Word. And her life has touched many hearts. But more importantly, it has just changed the trajectory of my family. Three generations have been marked by one encounter with the Lord. Three generations. There is this legacy of faith that I come from and that I walk in, and my family line has been kissed by the presence of the Holy Spirit, which changes everything. And there is something so special when there is just this generational echo of the Spirit. There were three sets of 14 generations separating Abraham to the birth of Jesus, as well as Timothy's mother, grandmother, and grandmother, Lois and Eunice, who both loved the Lord and impacted Timothy's life and ministry. So the hope I hope the hope I hold on to is that the young girls that I mentor, the women that I meet in the streets, in the brothels and outside clubs, that they would encounter the Lord and that would change the trajectory of their life. Mm -hmm. That God would take hold of their hearts, which would just see generations marked and changed, just like my nana. I find myself feasting upon the fruit from seeds she is sowing, and I'm now walking in this measure of blessing and favor in my life, which a lot of it I feel as if I've done nothing for. But there is this such a beautiful thing about the generational blessings that are being handed down. And I have um, just the honor of having such a hero of the faith go before me where I now walk on a strong foundation of faith and prayer that has been laid by my nana, my papa, my dad, and my mum. My children will be marked, shaping their children's children and their children's children and so on, just like Abraham to David all the way to Jesus. This picture is the hope that I hold on to. Imagine one life encountering the kindness of the Lord, which is the power to just change generations after them. Psalm 27 says, I am confident I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please just stretch your, your hands out to Anna Grace. Thank you. Father God, in the name of your Son Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty for this daughter of yours, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for what you have imprinted into her, Lord, something that nothing or no one in this world can purge out of her. Thank you, Father God, for the work that she is doing, work that we are, are, are not willing to do, Father God. Thank you, Father, for her past, her present, and her future. Thank you, Lord, that not long from now we are going to hear more of Anna Grace, Lord. And the work that she and, and her brothers and sisters are doing, Father God, is going to explode in this country of ours, Lord. And so, Father, we humbly pray in this day that the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the true counselor, Lord, 
will continue to be with her, will guide her, lead her, teach her, remind her of every word that Jesus said, will bless her, Lord, with spiritual gifts beyond belief, Lord Jesus. Lord, that she will walk into those streets in Taronga, Lord, and, and, and everywhere she goes, Lord, that it will be an experience like Peter and Paul and James and John and Jude and Timothy and, and Silas, Lord, where, where, where her, her um, shadow, Lord, will just need to touch one of those girls. And they will have a desire for the Lord God Almighty, an unstoppable, unquenchable desire for the Lord God Almighty. Father, may you bless her in every area of her life, Lord Jesus. Draw up a legion of angels around her. Hedge her in and protect her, Father God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the privilege to know her. We thank you that she is in our life. We thank you that she is part of our family. We pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And all God's people says, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.